Again, most people want to be free to do things, but they are afraid to fail. The fear of failure is manifested in irresponsibility, and especially in delegating those personal responsibilities to others where success is uncertain or carries possible or created liabilities which the person is not prepared to accept. They want authority, but they will not accept responsibility or liability. So they hire politicians to face reality for them. The people hire the politicians so that the people can, one, obtain security without managing it, two, obtain action without thinking about it, three, inflict theft, injury, and death upon others without having to contemplate either life or death, four, avoid responsibility for their own intentions. 5. Obtain the benefits of reality and science without exerting themselves in the discipline of facing or learning either of these things. They give the politicians the power to create and manage a war machine to 1. Provide for the survival of the nation womb. 2. Prevent encroachment of anything upon the nation womb. 3. Destroy the enemy who threatens the nation womb. Or, destroy those citizens of their own country who do not conform for the sake of stability of the nation womb. Politicians hold many quasi-military jobs, the lowest being the police which are soldiers, the attorneys and the CPAs next who are spies and saboteurs and the judges who shout the orders and run the closed union military shop for whatever the market will bear. The generals are industrialists. The presidential level of commander-in-chief is shared by the international bankers. The people know that they have created this farce and financed it with their own taxes, but they would rather knuckle under than be the hypocrite. Thus, a nation becomes divided into two very distinct parts, a docile subnation and a political subnation. The political subnation remains attached to the docile subnation, tolerates it, and leaches its substance until it grows strong enough to detach itself and then devour its parent. Human beings are machines, levers which may be grasped and turned, and there is little real difference between automating a society and automating a shoe factory. The New World Order will eliminate the population threat in several ways. Complete control of individual behavior may be established using electronic or chemical implants. No one will be allowed to have a child without permission. Stiff penalties wait for those who ignore the law. The violent, the old, the infirm, the handicapped, and the unproductive will be killed. Private property will be abolished. Since religion helps to create the population problem, it will not be tolerated except for the approved state-controlled religion which will evolve according to man's needs. Man cannot be trusted to safeguard what little is left in the way of natural resources. Technological development and economic growth will be severely cut back. Man will be required to live like his ancestors. Those who learn to be self-sufficient and can adapt to the absence of many of the things that we take for granted today, such as automobiles, will get along fine. Others will suffer terribly. Man will once again conform to the law of the survival of the fittest. No one is going to like the loss of individual freedoms guaranteed us by the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I do not like or agree with what is planned. Intellectually, I know that people will not solve the problems that we face unless they are made to do it. That is a sad commentary on the common man, but nevertheless, it is true. We must learn to accept individual responsibility for the world's problems or be willing to live by the terms of those who do. We must learn to love one another, share, deplore violence, and work with nature, not against it. 
Can you imagine what will happen if Los Angeles is hit with a 9.0 quake? New York City is destroyed by a terrorist-planted atomic bomb. World War III breaks out in the Middle East. The banks and the stock markets collapse. Food disappears from the markets. Some people disappear. The Messiah presents himself to the world, and all in a very short period of time. Can you imagine? The world power structure can, and will, if necessary, make some or all of those things happen to bring about the new world order. When asked what was in store for the world in the coming years, Henry Kissinger said this, Everything is going to be different. Many will suffer. A new world order will emerge. It will be a much better world for those who survive. In the long run, life will be better. The world we have wanted will be reality. A symposium was held in 1957, which was attended by some of the great scientific minds then living. They reached the conclusion that by or shortly after the year 2000, the planet would self-destruct due to increased population and man's exploitation of the environment without any help from God or the alien. By secret executive order of President Eisenhower, the Jason scholars were ordered to study this scenario and make recommendations from their findings. The Jason Society confirmed the findings of the scientists and made three recommendations called Alternatives 1, 2, and 3. Alternative 1 was to use nuclear devices to blast holes in the stratosphere from which the heat and pollution could escape into space. They would then change the human cultures from that of exploitation into cultures of environmental protection. Of the three, this was decided to be the least likely to succeed due to the inherent nature of man and the additional damage the nuclear explosions would themselves create. The existence of a hole in the ozone layer may indicate that Alternative 1 might have been attempted. This is, however, only conjecture. Alternative 2 was to build a vast network of underground cities and tunnels in which a select representation of all cultures and occupations could survive and carry on the human race. The rest of humanity would be left to fend for themselves on the surface of the planet. We know that these facilities have been built and are ready and waiting for the chosen few to be notified. Alternative 3 was to exploit the alien and conventional technology in order for a select few to leave the Earth and establish colonies in outer space. I am not able to either confirm or deny the existence of batch consignments of human slaves, which would be used for the manual labor as a part of the plan. The moon, codenamed Adam, was the object of primary interest, followed by the planet Mars, codenamed Eve. I am now in possession of official NASA photographs of one of the moon bases. I believe that the Mars colony is also a reality. As a delaying action, all three alternatives included birth control, sterilization, and the introduction of deadly microbes to control or slow the growth of the Earth's population. AIDS is only one result of these plans. It was decided by the elite that since the population must be reduced and controlled, it would be in the best interest of the human race to rid ourselves of the undesirable elements of our society. Specific targeted populations included blacks, Hispanics, and homosexuals. The joint United States and Soviet leadership dismissed Alternative 1, but ordered work to begin on Alternatives 2 and 3 virtually at the same time. In 1959, the RAND Corporation hosted a deep underground construction symposium. In the symposium report, machines are pictured and described which could bore a tunnel 45 feet in diameter at the rate of 5 feet per hour in 1959. It also displays pictures of huge tunnels and underground vaults containing what appear to be complex facilities and possibly even cities. 
it appears that the previous five years of all-out underground construction had made significant progress by that time. For many years, the secret government has been importing drugs and selling them to the people, mainly the poor and minorities. Social welfare programs were put into place to create a dependent, non-working element in our society. The government then began to remove these programs to force people into a criminal class that did not exist in the 50s and 60s. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for the criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity, which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms. Using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called Orion, the CIA inculcated the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. The media will convince the American people that a state of anarchy exists within the major cities. When public opinion has been won to this idea, they intend to state that a terrorist group armed with a nuclear weapon has entered the United States and that they plan to detonate this device in one of our cities. The government will then suspend the Constitution and declare martial law. A secret alien army of implanted humans and all dissidents, which translates into anyone they choose, will be rounded up and placed in the one-mile-square concentration camps which already exist. Are the people whom they intend to place in these concentration camps destined to make up the reported batch consignments of slave labor needed by the space colonies? The media, radio, TV, newspapers, and computer networks will be nationalized and seized. Anyone who resists will be taken or killed. This entire operation was rehearsed by the government and military in 1984 under the code name Rex 84 Alpha, and it went off without a hitch. When these events have transpired, the secret government takeover will be complete. Your freedom will never be returned, and you will live in slavery for the remainder of your life. You had better wake up, and you had better do it now. The most important information that you need to determine your future actions is that this new world order calls for the destruction of the sovereignty of nations, including the United States. The New World Order cannot and will not allow our Constitution to continue to exist. The New World Order will be a totalitarian socialist system. We will be slaves shackled to a cashless system of economic control.